Almost got it. Almost got it. Oh, almost got it. Gotta move further. Oh, almost got it. <laughs> well, <laughs> sorry. That reminds me of a, uh, a insurance commercial they had some years ago. The guy on a fishing pole. He's like, I got you a dollar. And that's the message this morning. Good morning, by the way. It's another wonderful and glorious and awesome day to be taught by the Holy Spirit and to be reminded of things that are good for us. Amen. Let's open up in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 28, where Jesus said, Why take thought about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither work nor do they spin. Yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not dressed like one of these. Therefore, if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is here and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Now, he's not saying don't work and lay around and God's going to clothe you. But he is saying have confidence, have faith in the loving Father to provide for you. Then he says in verse 31, Therefore, take no thought or take no anxious, worrisome, fretting thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after these things. For your heavenly Father knows that you have need of these things. But seek. What are you seeking? You're not seeking after what to eat, what to drink, what to wear, what the supply is. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be given to you. And then he says, Paul wrote in Romans chapter 8 and verse 14. So there Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God. Paul says, for as many as are led, led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Very similar concepts. You're following after something. I was thinking how money is a terrible leader and how so many people have, have followed money. You know, they've Obviously, we can always put on a mask and make it look like we're doing things noble. But they make decisions and have a heart to seek after getting more money. You don't have to be like Scrooge, you know, this old miser going, <laughs> you know, penny pinching to be following after money. And it was reminding me not to do that, not to make decisions based on money. And more importantly, to always submit my decisions to the Holy Spirit, to the Lord. You know, it says acknowledge him in all your ways and he will direct your paths. Because some decisions you make are based on money, right? You know, obviously if you go to a store and you see product A and product B and one of them costs more and they look like the same, you say, well, I'm gonna pick the one that's cheaper, usually. But always, always having in my heart, Lord, I'm not gonna let money be my leader. You're my leader. What do you say about this? Of course, some sound decisions are reasonable, but everything submitted to the Holy Spirit, everything in my heart, my goal is not to, to obtain, to lust and obtain for money, but to seek first the kingdom of God. And this tells you a little bit about some of the errors that happen uh, throughout history and today in business and in politics and, and whatnot, when people are led by having just a little bit more money. It's really easy to take that, this is actually a cat toy, to take that little bit of dollar, you know, hey, if you do well, if you just listen to what I say, if you make that little bit of compromise, if you violate your conscience just a little bit, you're going to get an extra dollar fifty an hour. How does that look to you? you know, or an extra hundred dollars, or a free donut, you know, or whatever, whatever it could be. It's just a little enticement trying to lead you on. That's a reason money is a terrible leader. It's because money can be attached to a string. And who do you suppose would like to be on the other end of that string? It would be nice to say it's God, but God is not leading us by lust. It's the enemy. The devil likes to be on the other end of that string, trying to drag people along. Paul again says in writing to Timothy, now it's a different, different subject, not being led by the Spirit, but in this case he says in 1 Timothy 6 and verse 9, 
but those who desire to be rich. Now that word desire to be is a little soft in my opinion. Those who are yearning to and following after being rich fall into temptation, aha, and a snare and into many foolish and harmful lusts, which drown men in destruction and ruin. For the love of money is the root of all evil. While coveting after money, some have strayed from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But I am convinced that is not you and that's not me. That's just a reminder to us. Keep God first. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. Be led by the Spirit. We're not following after money. We're not following after profit and gain. Thank God that the blessing of the Lord makes us rich and he adds no sorrow with it. But we love our Father. We love the living God. We love his kingdom. We love his ways. And we love to walk in righteousness. Amen. Be blessed.